Over the weekend, Black Magic finally introduced the long-awaited DaVinci Resolve 19, although this is the beta version at the moment. And with it came a variety of new features, tools, and updates, many of which leaned into the AI neural engine. There is one feature in particular which caught my attention, which is the ability to defocus a background. Add in fake shallow depth of field is one of the more harder visual elements to convincingly create due to the number of characteristics that come from a real defocused background. Now Adobe Lightroom did introduce something similar last year and the results are fairly decent. Not entirely convincing but pretty passable but of course it is vastly different in adding a defocused background to a photo versus a video. Well today Let's have a look at just how great this is because I did notice in the Resolve update when they were displaying the defocus background, there were parts of the hair which didn't follow through uh, that precise. So I've downloaded a variety of clips from the Fedivo library under different circumstances with different backgrounds and we're going to see how far we can push this tool and see if we can finally create a convincing shallow depth of field without using a fast prime lens. Okay, we're inside of DaVinci Resolve 19 beta. I have these clips from the Fedivo library. Uh, we have this bike mechanic here. He's very happy because he's just built a new prototype motorcycle. Little does he know that that motorbike is under an NDA and he should not be shown it. So now we need to save him from a lawsuit. So we're gonna go to the color page. And unfortunately, it's not as simple as just, you know, dragging the effect onto a node and job done. It does require a little bit of a setup. Now there are two ways in which we can do this. We can either use an external key node structure or just add it all onto the one node. Um, I would recommend in not doing it like this. So if we go to the magic mask person and we make sure we've got an additive qualifier, the toggle mask overlay is on. We're gonna draw a nice stroke over his body, add the defocus background. You can do it all in one node, it's okay. But the issue is, it gets a little bit crowded on screen, especially if you have like a number of different strokes over here and you're trying to figure out what's going on, make some adjustments and you can't because it looks like a three-year-old has taken their crayons to the screen. So what I would recommend in doing is instead creating a node structure like this and we're gonna create an external key. So whatever is masked out in node two does not, uh, is not affected by the adjustments in node three. So to do this, we're gonna take the connection point from node one's green square, square to the green triangle on node three, and then take the connection point from the blue square on node two to the triangle, blue triangle on node three, how's a mouthful? And that creates, as a result, just told us an external key. So now we can go back to our magic mask panel, change it to magic mask person, additive uh, stroke, toggle mask overlay is on, and just draw a stroke over the subject. Unlike compositing of days gone by, we don't have to uh, draw around him. It does a pretty good job. Though I can see that the ear here is not being caught properly, as well as the neck and a little bit of the shirt. So I'm gonna change this from quality uh, faster to better. And there we go. Oh, his hand, for some reason, has not been masked. So just draw another stroke over that and analyze forward and backwards, and just keep an eye out for any areas that do not get masked correctly. Uh, let's go through this. Yep, there we go, look at that, on the bike cylinder. I have no idea why that's being caught up in the mask. This is the beta of Resolve, so there are bugs to be expected. If something like this does happen, you just take the subtractive stroke, bring it over the area, and analyze forward and backwards again. And I think, Looking at this as it does its, did I just see another jolt of red mask? No, I think we're okay. We'll soon see anyway, once we, we add the, uh, the defocus effect. So with that sorted, I might just add the tiniest bit of blur to sort of take away those sharp edges. And that is looking like a good mask. Even his hair, um, spiky hairstyle has been caught up in it, very good. Go to node three, we're gonna add the defocus background. Oh, let's turn off that first. And press play. 
Okay, that is looking pretty decent. Do I have any critiques of it at the moment? Not yet. So let's increase the blur a touch. Okay, so it looks like we are having a little bit of ghosting around his shoulder here and perhaps the mask is not as close as we want it to. So we will just go back into the magic mask and now start to refine it so we can get rid of that. I think it's going to be a case of cleaning the whites or cleaning the blacks. I can never remember which one it is. That's looking decent. Maybe let's like denoise it. There we go. That's much better. Again, we are still getting some of the ghost in like around the shirt by here. But I think we're going to take this as a win. If this was a social video, I don't think anyone's going to be paying to that sort of stuff in the first place. And for what it is, we're defocusing the background. I think it's done a fairly good job. It's not the same as using a prime lens with uh, a very shallow depth of field, but it's done a pretty good job of dropping that out of focus. And I think if you're at the stage where you're going to have to defocus the background on a video clip like this, I'm sure the, the ghosting around the shirt is the least of your concerns. However, of course, we do have to state that that is present. Okay, so for the second clip, uh, we have this model um, I believe she's holding bicycle helmet, skateboard helmet, it looks like. And um, outside of this being a, a clip that has a very distinctive background, which our director once blurred out because those mosaic tiles are too distracting, I've been a little bit malicious in choosing this clip because I know that this flow in here of these single strands in the wind are a compositor's nightmare. Um, on a green screen, this is going to cause havoc. Likewise, I'm not too sure the blur effect is going to hold up that well with this. So let's give it a go. I've already gone through the process of doing the magic mask, as you know, do that now. So let's add defocus background to the node. And tell you what, let's change this to better. Maybe give it a little bit of a blur as well. Clean some of the blacks and denoise. So it's done a decent job. What I thought it might have done is if you if we have a look at the hair strands by here, we can see that these seep through, you know, we're seeing the background for these hair strands. I thought it was going to do that on all of this. Perhaps it's because I've got the denoise activated. If I turn that down, no, it's not getting caught up in it. That's pretty cool. I thought the background was going to be a little bit more pronounced through the hair. So again, I think if this was a social video, it's pretty passable. Of course, what we do have is while the defocus tool has not been caught up in the middle all around her hair by here, like it has done over this section, which I thought was going to be the case, it's just blurred out the hair, which isn't ideal and it kind of gives us that artificial blurring effect uh you know like an iphone portrait mode so it's okay it's done a it's done a fairly decent job it's even getting the gap through the hand which is pretty decent but you know if you wanted to pixel peep there are areas here where we can spot it through the hand that is in focus out of focus and so forth pretty good not as great as the car mechanic who doesn't have flowing hair Okay, so for our third example, again, I've sort of been a little bit nasty to the beta of Resolve. I really wanted to sort of push this defocus background effect to a quite an extreme. And we have these two business operatives in, a, in the park making a deal. Unfortunately, we did not get the location release for that building in the background. And the producer wants us to drop this shot out of focus. So I've already created my mask. I think I might just go into it and Blur it out a touch and maybe add a little bit of denoise, but it's done a fairly good job. So we're going to go to our third node, add defocus background again, and this time we're going to increase the blur a significant amount to ensure that the background is out of focus. And with this shot in particular, there's a lot of hand movement between both parties. So let's have a look at how this looks.
So again, it's pretty decent. I think the translucent material here is causing a little bit of an issue. I think Resolve is unable to sort of uh, manage the, the soft edge of the material. It's sort of acting a little bit like diffusion. Same with the nose. But, you know, if this was a quick shot, again, for social media or something of the likes, uh, like a web ad, possibly passable. And I think if we added more refinement within our magic mask or perhaps within the adjust mask properties in the um, defocus background tool itself, we could potentially get a better mask fill. But I think overall, it's just about passable. I think the type of shots that are going to really stand out are the ones like the cam mechanic, where there's little to no movement, there's no flow in here, there's no soft material. Um, but outside of that, it's pretty decent. I do think, quite like most AI tools, this is going to get better. All right, guys, I've been Lewis with Fedivo. The results that we saw today, they were somewhat mixed. Of course, we do have to remember that the software is in the beta version and Blackmagic are incredibly stellar at updating their software, as we know. So this is only going to get better, as we have seen with a number of AI tools. But at the moment, you are going to have to require your footage to be in a very specific situation. But at the moment, I would say that you need to ensure that your media has been composed in a very specific manner if you do intend to later uh, defocus the background with the likes of making sure that your subject is not wearing similar colors as the background, there's no transparent material, movement isn't that crazy, and of course, that there's no flow in here. With that, there's definitely a few situations that I think I could use this, such as this tutorial sequence, because uh, I am filming on an F4 lens and sometimes that background is not as much out of focus as I would like it to be. Right, I've been Lewis and I'll catch you guys next week.